Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Mark Smith, Natchez Trace Veterinary Services, and I wanted to bring you this video today to tell you about that fine critter right there. That's a good looking dog. Uh, that's Waylon. Waylon. Where'd that dog come? I mean, where, give me, what's the history? This dog is an Australian cattle dog. He's a miniature. How old is he? 13 weeks. 13 weeks. And so what I'm doing today is I'm going to tell you how we approach these little puppies and what we do so that you have clarity on the best way to treat your puppy. Because everybody needs to know that, okay? So, Waylon, let's say you came in to me. And by the way, this is Leah. This is our new employee. Leah's wonderful. She is an Oregonian. Thank you. If you don't know what an Oregonian is, that's somebody from Oregon. I'm a Nashvilleian. That's somebody from Nashville. She's an Oregonian. And I make fun of her for that. But anyway, so we're going to take sweet little Waylon here. Uh, he's a good dog. And uh, we're going to go through an exam, kind of, and what we do on him as far as if he came into the practice and how I would advise people to do what they need to do to take the best care of their puppies. So the first thing we do is most puppies, we recommend they come in in six weeks. And six weeks is the time uh, when the maternal antibodies or the mommy's milk is starting to go away and it's usually the first time we administer a vaccine series, okay? And so what we do, we start with an exam. We look at the puppy's teeth and see those little teethies line up. And then we look back in his mouth. We make sure he hadn't eaten a stick or swallowed something. He shouldn't, shouldn't swallow these little puppies. They eat stuff all the time. You all know that. And... Uh, uh, we look in there, then we look in his ears, and I'm not going to use motoscope, but see, his ear's a little dirty. Yeah, I you noticed need to clean that. this dog's ear. Okay, and then we squeeze around on the base. See, he's a little bit painful right there, okay? And usually what that is, is that's a smoldering little infection, because a lot of puppies get it. They're not very efficient at cleaning their ear canals, okay? And so what will happen is they'll get some debris buildup, and then that buildup will usually lead to yeast growing, and yeast is a little painful. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we check their lymph nodes and then we turn them around this way and we palpate their belly. We feel their umbilicus for umbilical hernias. A hernia is a rent or a place in the body wall, kind of like belly button hernia. That's what it is. Your umbilicus is your belly button. Then we'd listen to him. We'd look at his skin, make sure he doesn't have any fleas. Lots of puppies will have fleas. We check him for musculoskeletal abnormalities. We check his kneecaps. We check his pecker. And then we check his balls. And we make sure he has two testicles down. I'm sorry if I said balls. I apologize. Testicles. We check his testicles. Make sure he's got two down. Some puppies will drop their testicles later on in six months, something like that. So Some of them will retain a testicle. When an animal has a retained testicle, it's called a cryptorchid. That's a different surgery than just a regular old castration. In horses, we call them high flankers sometimes. Anyway, so then we palpate him and we look around, we look at his rear end and all that. So then we move on to the most important things outside of the exam, which is gonna be vaccinations and when to vaccinate and parasite control. So on vaccines, it doesn't matter about vaccinating your pet unless you evaluate the risk factors. Vaccination is all about risk, okay? So if you have a dog that has no risk for the disease, then there's no sense in vaccinating him for it, right? Doesn't that seem reasonable? Okay, so, but with puppies, they're constantly exposed to disease and illness. Parvovirus, that's the big bad one. Parvovirus afflicts many dogs, especially puppies in shelter situations. It causes massive diarrhea, vomiting, not feeling good, bloody diarrhea, and ultimately about half of them die. The half that you save, generally you have a really big, big, big bill. So the point is that these little puppies need to be vaccinated and they need to be vaccinated diligently. They need to be vaccinated by people that know what they're doing, okay? The reason why we have a series of shots, this is an important question. We have a series of shots is because 
we don't know when the maternal antibodies go away, and we're trying to time that. So when we give a shot the maternal antibodies, that's what comes through their mommy's milk when these little puppies nurse. If those maternal antibodies are high, then the shot doesn't provide an immunity building incentive to the puppy's body. So that's why we gotta give multiple shots. So the way I typically do it in my practice is I do three vaccines, seven, 10, and 13 weeks. Then I do a rabies at 15 weeks. And that's just what works for me, okay? I don't vaccinate for lepto because most of the dogs in my practice are at no risk. If you're at risk, then it's okay to vaccinate for it. But the veterinarian and you, the pet owner, have to make that decision. So vaccinating pets is not simple, it's not straightforward. A lot of thought needs to go into it and you don't need to make each dog fit the same mold because that's not the best way to do it. So that's on vaccinating. So on these puppies, we usually do it seven, 10 and 13 weeks on a distemper parvo shot. And then we do rabies after that at about 15 weeks. And every once in a while we gotta make adjustments, but that's about it. Now on the parasite test, okay? That's the other test. That's when we stick the old rod up the rear end and look at it under a microscope, look at the sample up under the microscope. What we do in that instance is we do deworm the puppies with a straightforward dewormer like Strongid, okay, every three weeks. Mm -hmm. The pre patent period, do you know what that is? No. The pre patent period is the time when a puppy gets infected to the time they shed eggs on the parasite test. Okay, so a dog can actually be infected, but we can't tell it. We do run a parasite test on every puppy. Mm -hmm. Why? To see if they're infected. To see if they're infected, and because every medication we give doesn't kill all parasites. It's, it's not smart and it's not in your dog's best interest to give them medicine when they don't need it, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people do that. They just pile in this medicine in these puppies to kill every parasite we have. Well, the problem with that is a lot of puppies don't have parasites, number one. And then, and then number two, another problem with that is that, I mean, one basic premise of medicine is that you don't give medicine unless it's warranted. Right. That's why we have all these problems, okay? So, we run fecal test, we'll do three of them, and then we're also gonna deworm your dog, okay? And we're gonna deworm it prophylactically because of that pre patent period that I just mentioned. Puppies get infected, they go out and roll around in the grass, they sniff another dog's rear end, mm -hmm. they eat poop, they eat stuff outside, mm -hmm. and they get constantly reinfected. Right. And when we run our test, a lot of these eggs won't be shed during that three week interval, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's why we do that. So, do you have any questions about your puppy? No, I do not at this point. Are you sure? What age should I castrate, neuter? Well, that's a good question. So, and it depends, okay? There's a lot of different, this is really important too that you need to know, okay? So when you talk about castrating and neutering these dogs and, and even spaying these dogs, okay? When you do those things, we're doing that to prevent unwanted behavior and to prevent unnecessary production of puppies, right? Correct. And, but there's some consequences to doing that, okay? And this is gonna irritate some people, but anytime you cut, cut off the supply of testosterone and estrogen in a dog. That's what we do when we spam and neuter, right? We're right. pulling those organs out that produce those hormones. Well, those those hormones have an importance, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And after 20 years of doing this, I, instead of us having an obit epidemic of obesity in dogs just spontaneously, mm -hmm. we have fat dogs because of two reasons. Number one, they're spayed and they're castrated. We're taking the driving force for their metabolism away and we're feeding them a highly concentrated processed food that packs calories on it. Right. That's why. Okay. So there's consequences to spaying and neutering your dog. Okay, or cat, it doesn't matter. Right. Another thing is I think, you know, taking the estrogen away that the testicles and ovaries mm -hmm. provide leads to more soft tissue injuries because we know that estrogen is what makes a female's hips go from yay to yay when they have a baby, right? right. And be 
you know, move around and all that so they can accommodate, uh, you know, the developing fetus. Right. Well, when we take those away in, in our dogs, and our kitties, especially dogs, then those, the elasticity in those tissues, those cruciate ligaments is gone, and so they can tear them a whole lot faster and a whole lot easier. That's my belief. Some people may say I'm crazy, but that's what I think. So it makes sense to me. And I think that same model is following along in, in, uh, in humans, where there's pretty predictable times at which a female tears her cruciate ligament based off her menstrual cycle. And, and, and typically it's when that estrogen is the lowest. Okay, so we hadn't proven it out in dogs yet, but that's what I think. So, so you think ovary sparing or? Well, I'm not saying or? that necessarily, but I'm, what I'm saying is I'm not sure that to arbitrarily say, oh, we spay your dog at six months every single time is the best way to do it. I think it's gotta be calculated. I think it needs to be thought through. Um, and bigger I think, dogs I think, intact longer. Huh? Bigger dogs, bigger breed dogs, would you leave intact longer? Well, it just, it depends on the owner and what they want mm -hmm. and what their goals are for their pet. But I'm here to make medical recommendations and that's what I do and that's, yeah. that's what I do best. And so it just depends, but it's my job as a veterinarian to talk, take you through these scenarios. So, all right, well, if you've got any questions about how to take care of a puppy, this is a good looking dog. Everybody's just gone bananas over him. I thought about taking him and you giving him to me. Yeah, then he'd be unruly. No, he wouldn't. I'd have him in line. He'd be doing exactly what I said. He wouldn't be doing that, would he? So, anyway, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, you're welcome to uh, email us or look us up on the web, or you may be finding on this web, call us yeah. if you have any questions about how to take care of your puppy. But that's what I found to be the best way to approach a puppy in 20 years of doing it and treating tons of puppies uh, over my career. So make your choices diligently. You need to vaccinate, vaccinate what you are, at, or what your puppy's at risk for. Test for parasites. Don't arbitrarily give medicine. That's a mistake. And then you'll have a happy, healthy puppy, just like Waylon. So say bye-bye, Waylon. Please say yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you, sugar. <laughs>